end. They ran for cover, but found none. Many spent the whole night at the mercy of the elements. By morning, some, like Mehran and his friends, had made it to Opatovat's transit camp. He's a chemical engineer from Iran who wants to go to England, but this mass migration is harder than he thought. I cannot imagine this, this, this much, the circumstance, this much difficult. The weather rainy and the help and supporting, I think it is not enough. If I know this much difficult, I will bring something warmer for myself. There are so many people on the move that police vans are being used. The journey is getting colder now and more difficult, but it hasn't stopped the flow of people. On average, there are more than 6,000 travelling every day. EU officials say the greatest numbers are yet to come. For many already here, there could be an arduous winter ahead. Foreign Affairs Minister Julie Bishop is among world leaders who have committed to an ambitious set of goals. Leaders, including the Pope, will gather at the United Nations in New York to discuss the 17 global goals that include ending extreme poverty and fixing climate change. Plan International is one group heavily involved in the Global Goals Initiative and its CEO, Ian Wishart, joins us now. Mm. Hi. G'day, Ian. How are you? Good morning. Ian, can you just give us some specifics about what these goals are? Well, these goals are designed uh, to end extreme poverty uh, and injustice and help us live sustainably on this planet. And so they're new goals, I guess, for this century uh, that will help us all to live and share the planet. So there are targets within these goals too, aren't there? So, for instance, uh, you know, eradicating the number of people living on less than $1.25 a day, that sort of thing. Is that a new development? Look, we've had Millennium Development Goals before, but those goals were about the rich uh, helping the poor. These goals are about all of us learning to uh, live on this planet and share it. And so they are a momentous occasion uh, when we're facing up to the fact that uh, we all have to share this planet if we're to survive. So they do include key targets like ending extreme poverty and hunger, uh, ending the inequality that faces particularly women and girls and learning to share the, the earth, the water, the resources and ultimately the climate. And if we can't do these things, our century will be a tough century indeed. There is a tough challenge ahead though when you consider that some uh, 50 of the world's most fragile countries and economies are home to some of 43% of those living in extreme poverty and we have a situation here in Australia where we've actually reduced our foreign aid in uh, recent times. Are we able to actually reach the goals that have been set? Look, the global goals is really a wake-up call uh, that in fact we're all in this together. And you're right, you're absolutely right, that the recent cuts to Australian aid have been a backward step. Uh, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, that was the Abbott hockey government. I think that we should be moving in a new direction now. We need the governments of the world to commit to these goals because unless we do that, we, none of us can live in peace and security. You know, cutting aid is a bit like cutting, getting rid of your home insurance. It seems good in that you don't have to pay the premium, but the price of that will come back to haunt you later on. Because if people in poor countries can't live uh, in injustice and with, with adequate food and shelter, that ultimately will affect us. The previous goals that you were talking about, the Millennium Development Goals, also were targeting reducing that extreme poverty, yet we still have a billion people, roughly estimated, uh, under that poverty line how confident are you that these new goals will, will do anything to erode that number? Well, the Millennium Development Goals were in fact quite a, a big success. The aim of the Millennium Development Goals was to halve extreme poverty because that was the goal that seemed achievable back in 2000. These new goals are designed uh, by 2030 to eliminate extreme poverty and hunger and so forth. So we did make great progress on the old goals, in, especially on you know, those living in ex extreme poverty. That was halved. Some of the other goals, um, we didn't get quite as far, but we are certainly moving in the right direction. 
and they mobilise the whole community, all governments, uh, to, to put pressure on to, to provide finance to make that happen. Now, I note that within those 17 key goals that have been uh, proposed with this sustainable development um, program is uh, a goal about uh, removing inequality when it comes to gender. And uh, just how critical do you feel that this will be in terms of overall development globally? Look, Plan International Australia fought very hard uh, to, for some of the wording under Goal 5, which is to eliminate the inequality that women and girls face and, and give them power uh, to, over their lives. We know that if you educate a girl, she will go on to find a decent job and have a healthy family and lift her whole family out of poverty. So the whole world is now realising that uh, actually empowering women and girls is the secret to uh, helping the global economy. So we absolutely believe this goal is critical to all of the global goals. If this goal can be achieved, it will enable us to make greater progress on all other goals, such as education and health. I'm interested in goal 13, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. That sounds very broad. How does that work on an international stage? Yes, that goal is at the moment quite broad uh, because uh, actually, the UN is looking to the Paris Agreement, which is coming up in December, to nail down the very specifics about climate change. Now, Australia has already put in its uh, pitch for what it says it will do. Uh, I don't feel it's enough. And in fact, I think uh, if we can get all those bids on the table in Paris, the world will realise that the, the, the bids or the pitches that are there are not going to reduce or hold back that two degrees of climate change uh, temperature. So the world will realise we, we need to do more. Now, I think Australia is uh, just hoping that some kind of framework, some kind of agreement will come about with the major powers in Paris, but it won't be enough. So we will need to, as citizens, put more pressure on our governments to do more. Now, underpinning, of course, all of these goals will be the need for partnerships. Of course, organisations such as Plan International working in concert with private organisations, the government and even communities as a whole. How confident are you that we will be able to achieve the kind of partnerships required when we also have, uh, you know, such in incredible humanitarian crises currently unfolding, such as the Syrian conflict, which is uh, impacting currently on Europe? How are we able to get the world as such, working together on these issues? Yes, uh, it is true that the private sector will need to do some of the lifting towards these goals. Uh, however, I do think it's a false idea to say that uh, we can cut aid because the private sector will do more. In fact, we need aid to be increasing, moving towards the 0.7 percent of GNI, uh, that's what the UN regards as necessary to achieve goals. Unfortunately here in Australia uh, we've been moving backwards with over 11 billion dollars cut out of the aid budget and uh, this is not helping and I think there needs to be a new approach uh, recognising that actually uh, helping the whole world uh, is a way of helping ourselves as well as well as dealing with the grave injustices that people face in developing countries. So it will need uh, a new approach, a fresh optimistic approach to the world rather than a negative retracting kind of miserly w view of the world which I'm afraid we've recently come from. All right Ian Wishart, I'm sure Plan International will continue its role in the Global Development Goals. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, as you were just hearing, the United Nations formally adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development this week. The 17 goals aim to improve the quality of life for people worldwide and tackle everything from poverty to pollution. Improving life underwater is another...